Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're here this afternoon with Councilman Frank Hinojosa and Bill Norris with Norris and Leal. Now, the reason we're here to, today is because we want to address um, the Councilman and with the expertise of, of Mr. Norris, address the issue we've been having with city water, in particular the odor and the taste and those uh, issues. In addition to there's, the city's embarking on some really exciting possibilities of a desal uh, project. And we'd like to talk about that and explain to everyone who's listening uh, what the benefits of that would be to the city and as also to, to the region. So first let me introduce uh, Councilman Hossa. Hello everybody, Frank Hossa. Uh, glad to be here. And Bill Norris, we're just gonna call you Bill to speak. Or that, that's perfect. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Bill Norris with the Norris Layout. And so we've we have the pleasure to work with the city on on their water issues, and uh, look forward to have this discussion. Okay. And just so everyone can understand, your in terms of your qualifications, um, what's your background? Um, I have an engineering background uh, from Texas A&M, civil engineering, and a master's in uh, uh, civil and environmental engineering from uh, University of Texas at Arlington. And so I've. I've uh, run an engineering company since uh, 1984. Uh, we've been doing alternative water supplies and finding finding solutions for different entities across the state and and around the country and uh, and abroad. Um, and so our specialty uh, is is reuse, uh, desalination, brackish desalination, uh, water supply planning, things like that. And for most of us that don't understand that, when you say brackish planting, what is that? Brackish, uh, a lot of the plants that we've done in the state of Texas are brackish groundwater. Uh, to give you an idea, seawater is, um, we like to refer to it as milligrams per liter of total dissolved solids, which is basically we call the salt content. So seawater is 30,000 parts or milligrams per liter. Uh, brackish here in the city of Alice is probably two to three thousand, so it's a tenth of what uh, seawater is. And so generally, a rule of thumb, uh, the higher the salt content, the more pressure it, it takes to remove that salt. So salt water is totally different. I mean, when people talk about desalination, it's not just seawater. Brackish water is, in many cases, and especially in the case of, uh, of Alice, it's less costly than treating surface water, like from Lake Corpus Christi. We're talking about wells. Yes, yeah, okay. from, from groundwater wells. And, and so no one will misunderstand. The city has no intention of, of building something near the bay or the gulf, anything like that. We're, we're drilling into the ground, correct? It's, it's located that we're anticipating drilling wells located at their existing surface water treatment plant. So we won't be building any more pipelines from Corpus Christi from from the Gulf of Mexico, we're going to drill right behind our our existing uh, uh, water plant right now. That is, that is correct. That's Do you have an abundance of water below you that is untapped resource for the area? <coughs> Actually, two aquifers, right? Yes, there's a Evangel Aquifer, which is a shallower part. That's where most of the people are that do take water from groundwater wells. Um, but we're going deeper to the Jasper, uh, which will not affect any any user of the evangeline and and that's that's a concern around the area that if you start putting more wells where people already have a demand mm -hmm. you'll be lowering the the capabilities of the wells uh, for a large area but down in the jasper which is about two thousand feet deep uh, we there's no one utilizing the jasper that's in in the near vicinity okay so regarding the um, this concept we're talking about reverse osmosis, correct? Yes, reverse osmosis. We take it down to a level where um, a personal household, it's almost equivalent, just on a larger scale, to putting a reverse osmosis or water treatment uh, filters under your kitchen sink, just a uh, larger scale, correct? It's identical, it's a larger scale and more efficient. Okay. And one of the reasons that the councilman, uh, you know, also wanted you to come is, is he wanted you to explain this uh, to the public. That way there wouldn't be any confusion as to um, at least the term desal, because that may be a misnomer. It, it normally is. I think even people in the business, they think desalination is seawater, and it's not. Anything desalination, anything that takes salt out of, even even uh, your drinking water has salt in it, if you, you could actually desalinate that as well. It, will it cost the city of Alice more money to do that than pipeline the water from uh, Lake Corpus Christi? 
Based on our findings that we did for the Alice Water Authority, uh, it actually, uh, over a 20 year period, will save you about $1.8 million per year by doing this. If you do nothing, it's gonna cost you more. Because there, there are certain fixed costs that will remain fixed, whether we continue doing what we're doing or go with this process, correct? Yeah, with if you continue what you're doing, you're actually paying um, a pretty high price for water uh, purchased at Lake Corpus Christi. Then you deliver that water to Lake Findlay and then pump it again. So your operational costs uh, are over $2 per thousand gallons before you ever treat the water. Right. And uh, so it, it's, it's very costly. So if you continue to do that, and prices will increase. I mean, they have historically uh, from Corpus Christi. And so if you add an additional escalation to that, um, you can actually build and operate a brackish groundwater desalination plant less costly than it is if you do nothing. That would include the, the, the debt on it and the operations. And the quality of water would would definitely go better, be better? Yeah, it, if you uh, take a look at your your bottle water, it usually says uh, water has been uh, uh, treated through reverse osmosis and minerals added for con for um, for taste, and that's basically what we're, we will be doing. It, it, it gives you a bottle quality water at the tap. So in, ter in terms of money, you said there's be a, there'll be a cost savings yearly, correct? That is correct. Over how much did you say it was during the year? Well, we if we look at what you would have to do to your surface water system uh, just to maintain it and operate it for 20 years, you have to make some improvements to your pipeline and to your pump station and pay for the water that uh, you purchased from Corpus Christi. And if you compare that with building a, uh -huh. uh, a plant that actually uh, gives you about 80, 85% of your water from the Brackish groundwater plant, uh, you will save about $1.8 million per year. Wow. Okay. How many men would it take to operate this plant? We don't anticipate adding any more personnel than what no, you already no have. No more personnel. No more personnel. Yeah, that's impressive. So that would be part of the f uh, uh, flat um, cost. It would be no matter what you did, correct? So if we're saving one point some odd million dollars, that's partly due because we don't have to buy water anymore. We're basically getting it free from the ground. You get it free from the ground other than the cost of pulling it from the ground. But you don't pay anybody for that uh, and that you eliminate. You don't eliminate it because you're still gonna treat a portion of your water because you, you don't wanna, this, this way the city of Alice has two sources of water. Sources. And so uh, the reservoir level at Lake Corpus Christi is at 30%. Last year it was at 40%. And um, if the drought continues, then you may have some difficulty even getting water from Lake Corpus Christi. So this is a drought tolerant, a drought resistant, and I, I would even venture to say that it, it's, uh, it eliminates your drought concerns. Meaning we could be drought resistant. Yeah, even, even beyond that, it's not, but not the word drought resistant, but uh, drought proof. Drought proof, mm -hmm. yeah. Because, yeah, good Frank. Uh, I visited the, I guess six months ago or so, uh, the desal plant in the valley in Donna, and uh, how many of those plants have you are operating in that same water district, which is probably the the largest water district in the state? Yeah, Nor North Alamo Water Supply Corporation ha covers three counties, and they have seven surface water plants, just like you have a surface water plant that takes water from Corpus. They built a brackish groundwater plant at six of those locations, and so. And they've been in operation anywhere from eight, from th probably four to four to ten years. And so when they reduce the amount of water they pull f from the brackish plant, they get complaints from taking water. So that the quality of water is, is considerably different and a h much higher quality because reverse osmosis, just like if people want to improve their water quality, they build these things under the, from, from a local manufacturer and they put them under their sink mm -hmm. for drinking purposes. And so you get that quality of, quality of water for throughout your old house for less cost than what you're paying right now. So arguably, if someone were to turn in their tap water, they could get um, bottle quality of water. Absolutely. And, and you minimize your, your wear and tear on your um, uh, hot water heater plumbing, plumbing and your dishwasher <coughs> because you're taking the calcium out of the water, mm -hmm. and so that eliminates uh, your hardness that 
builds up into your system when you heat up the water. And I, I believe that was the reason they stopped using the water wells years ago here in the city of Dallas because of the corrosion that that water was uh, occurring in, in the plumbing supplies and the pipes and, and water heaters and stuff. And this is another step in, in uh, having better quality water, could be another step. Yeah, and back then it probably it was more costly to treat that water, yeah. and people thought, well, we don't have a choice, so we need to go take the surface water and pay pay a little more more money for that. But now, uh, with the way things have progressed, um, innovation in developing this this technique and process, um, it's proven. And with water that's not cor corrosive anymore, like, like like Frank mentioned, the infrastructure underground, basically the pipes underground that transport this water. Will last longer? I mean, they could. I, I don't think that your drinking water is really corrosive. I think what happens is what I talk about being corrosive inside your house mm -hmm. is is the hardness. When you heat the water up, then it precipitates the calcium, like on your on your elements in your heat, hot water heater and in your uh, dishwasher. It makes them last longer. Yeah. Um, because one of the on the bucket list. I take that word, but on the bucket list for the city council is making sure that the city and, and the citizens for this community uh, never run out of water and have good quality water. And so one of the considerations is, is of course, this desal plant and fixing or spending money on the transmission lines from here to, to Mathis. So if the money was spent on those transmission lines, let's say we have state-of-the-art brand new lines. But you still run out of, run out of water in Mathis. That doesn't solve the problem, does it? No, it 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 just um, gives you one source of water, and you're still subject to a drought drought condition. Uh, you're still subject to the losses that you have within the system because you have uh, you have evaporation losses within Lake Finley sure. that you lose a lot of water, and you pay for that water. And we're still at their mercy, at the lake's mercy, to, to have water. That's right. And, and I remember. Uh, years ago when Mayor Lemon was the mayor and we had a pretty bad drought that I I told him that kind of reprimanded him or got after him or whatever that you know we needed to have another secondary option uh, alternative water source for Alice and that's why I'm so interested in, in uh, maybe Mayor Lemon could pat me in the back if, <laughs> if this <laughs> comes through. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, it was a pretty big scare, and, and luckily we got some rain, and, and we got out of that that drought that we were in bad that year. Well, Alice is very fortunate in in the fact that you can add another water supply, and it doesn't cost you any more money than what you're already spending. I haven't even seen that anywhere else, because you're spending money to buy water, yeah. you're replacing that purchase of water with the ability to to finance a, a plant and operate the plant less costly than it is to, to do nothing. And that, that's unusual. You, uh, um, and get a, a second supply. Sure. Right. right. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big, big thing. Big um, and you'll see oasis is when, when other parts of the state have one source of water, ba basically surface water. Uh, and West Texas is that way now. Wichita Falls has to drink wastewater, effluent. Uh, they actually tr take the effluent from the plant and you utilize that. That's they haven't watered the yards in two years, oh, yeah. um, and so they truck in water just to just to water the trees. I have a couple of friends, and I just visited with them a couple of weeks ago when I was in, in Irving, uh, and they told me that you know when they're going to take a shower, they have a bucket on their spout, on their water spout in the tub or shower. By the time the water gets hot to where they're going to bathe, they collect all that water, and that's their watering for their potted water. For I do, I do that now. Do you do that now mm -hmm. yourself? Because normally we just turn on the water and wait till it comes out and until mm -hmm. it's hot, and we waste a lot of water in, in that method. But they save, they're saving the water, and, and no lawn, they haven't watered their lawns in months and months, so they lost all their lawns. And we don't wish it to fall. And this council doesn't want to get to that point. No. Because this would, this would uh, pretty much eliminate water restrictions. It would. I mean, if, if something happened to um, Lake Corpus, you could pump, you would probably restrict water, but you'd have a lot of water. I mean, you could always add another well, but with your existing capacity, it's not to take care of your peaks, but it would take care of 85% of your supplies. So it would be a minimal, a very minimal uh, disruption. And, and that would give our 
our citizens and ourselves uh, peace of mind that we will have water in case of a drought. We'll continue having water and take care of our citizens here in, in Alice. Absolutely. And could develop into other things eventually, but first we have to guarantee that water for, uh, for the city of Alice. And just so no one would think that when you say plant, we're, we're thinking about this immensely large facility. Um, it's not, is it? No, the, um, when, when you look at the footprint for a brackish desal plant is about, I would say, a tenth, less than a tenth of the size of a, a, a regular surface water treatment plant. Okay. Size of a house, maybe? Mm. Twice as big. Maybe. Depends on where you live. But we're not <laughs> maybe yeah, depends on your house. But we're not talking refinery, big. Uh, no, uh, you would, you can't even tell it's a plant. It's 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 basically I would say probably a forty by seventy foot seventy foot steel sure. building. Then you could put a brick facade on it. Looks like a, just a commercial commercial building, and uh, utilize existing ground storage and pumping from the existing plant. So it just looks like another building. And if you take this to the to the utmost uh, personal individual level. You're saving money because, for instance, let's say that, that uh, you don't drink water. Some of the outer communities have uranium arsenic lead uh, that still is above the acceptable levels. So a lot of us that live in those outer areas of the city buy water, buy bottled water. So if you get the reverse osmosis, you put it into a sink, you save money by not having to go buy water anymore, which is what this is, just in a larger scale, correct? Yeah, if you figure out what the cost per thousand gallons of, of, a, of a bottle of water is, uh, four or five hundred dollars per sure. thousand gallons, as opposed to two or three dollars per thousand sure. gallons. So if you equate that to the, um, um, like, the, like the council, for instance, uh, very concerned about the, the cost of water and, the, and, and just fiscally, um, because of the downturn of the economy, fiscally making sure that every penny that's spent is spent wisely. So if you save the million and some chains per year, that's one savings, correct? Mm -hmm. And I guess the old adage is you, you make money by either earning it or by not spending it, correct? That's correct. So if you do a facility like this, um, is, it, is it potentially, um, can the city become also a retailer or seller of water, not just to this community? but to outer communities? I, I think, um, I know the state of Texas and the Texas Water Development Board really encourage communities working together okay. to solve issues because one of your neighboring communities may be out of water and they, they like to interconnect between cities. It could be, it could go both ways. And if you were able to diversify that into you know some of the surrounding communities, I, I think that's, that's, that's always a good thing. And then, and then sell the water to make up the difference in whatever cost. In other words, not necessarily costing the city of Alice uh, ratepayers additional money that that maybe there's grants associated with that that uh, you recover your cost for that and being good good stewards for the for the whole area. So we could sell water. Yes, possibly sell water to other communities. So the savings that that, that the councilman would be uh, concerned with, as well as the other councilman and councilwoman. Uh, would be not only you saving money and making money by saving money yearly, but you're selling. Um, it's quite a bit of savings, correct? Yeah, you get revenues coming in, um, and it costs you less because you're not spending the money to 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 pay pay for the water that you have to treat. So you're getting better water, better quality water. Um, you're saving money, and you're making money. Drop proofing. Drop proofing. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Better, better quality water, tasting water. I'm going to read you something. Um, it says the Alice City of Public City of Alice Public Works Department will conduct a burnout this month to prevent recent algae blooms that affect the quality of the water, uh, the municipal water source. Twice a year, in the fall and the spring, water from the bottom portion of the lake comes to the surface as the season changes, causing a large amount of algae to enter the water system. And I read you that only because it's interesting. That was back in November 3rd of 2009. Um, the algae bloom that the city's been uh, incurring or going through uh, the last several weeks, as a water expert, can, can you tell us about that? How, how, um, 
unusual it is or how usual it is and, and what possible options that you can offer this city and this council? It, it, it's a normal occurrence for any lake body to, uh, to change and so you, you get algae blooms and algae blooms um, cause taste and odor mm -hmm. and so the, the surface water treatment will take that it will, will treat the water to a, to a higher quality, but it doesn't h help with the with the taste and odor because you add the chlorine to it, it, it creates a different process. And so what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that your, your chemicals, it, it can help it get somewhat into the system. And it takes a little while to get, to get through that. Uh, we're working with the city right now to, uh, to enhance that. Uh, so we're running some tests uh, all the way through uh, the water coming into the plant uh, and out of the plant and even into the distribution because sometimes at the plant it, everything is fine out of the plant but sometimes it happens when you change, change the chemical constituents it may affect what's happening in the pipeline and causing what, while the plant water really looks good it may be at some houses and so we're, we're trying to find the areas in the city where it may be the worst could be could be a pipeline part pipeline issue. There's probably about five or six different things we're looking at, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have a final final tally on each of those because because we, we we ran some samples and they're off at the lab, and so once we get those, we can kind of figure out where what what things need to be changed. I think our chemical addition we use alum here at the plant, and so. Um, we want to get the proper dosage, so we want to call upon the chemical suppliers to come in on a regular basis to run what we call jar test to make sure that what they're providing us meets what we need to do to, to give the, the water quality we need out of the plant. Water quality is, is, is still drinkable, it's not like it's, it's not meeting the drinking water standards, but you know, you, you do have the smell, and sometimes you have, have some of the things that happen in the distribution system. So, we want to clear that up, make sure that 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 it gets taken care of. And and this algae bloom, did it just happen here in Lake Finley or does it happen at the... It happens Lake pretty much everywhere. everywhere. I think just, they, we mentioned that it happened in Austin. Uh, the, you know, it's it's when the temperature changes and so you have a you have, you have algae blooms or the, or the the reservoirs turn over so the bottom of the reservoir it's it's kind of a, a normal occurrence so you, you've just got to you've got to bear with it. and. Yeah, and and, and I'm probably one of the suggestions I talked to this city is is let the chemical suppliers come in there and help you on a regular basis instead of coming in once a year and say that one size fits all. They need to be in constant contact with them so that they can find the proper the proper mix of chemicals to, to, to take care of it. Okay. And that's one of the ways that you're assisting this, this city, correct? Yes. And I assume uh, you've been getting a lot of phone calls from all the councilmen and councilwomen, correct? Uh, a time. couple, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have I finished? They have. Uh, the, they biggest, have the, biggest speed the biggest question is, what have you found? <laughs> yeah. When are we going to get rid of the results? Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> I said patience. Patience. Uh, <laughs> and, and the main thing is, is for everyone to understand, it's a naturally occurring consequence of, of just the seasons, correct? That, that is correct. Because I noticed in the article it says, in the fall and spring. Any particular reason for that? Because you go from a cold to a warm, and it changes, and so it's it's because generally change. because when you change, change from a from one extreme to the other, and you you get more of your change from from winter where you might get some sub freezing, and then you see now it's it doesn't take long in Texas to get up to ninety degrees in a, in a matter of a week. Okay. So. And I'd I'd like to say real quick that I'd like to apologize to to our public and our families and everybody that's drinking this water and using this water for what is happening, but we're trying to do our best to, to correct it and, and we got uh, a good engineering firm uh, trying to help us solve the issue and the, also the chemical companies. So we're moving on it and we're trying to come to a, hopefully it, we can uh, put it to a minimal or stop. Well, you won't have that same, any, any of those issues with the brackish groundwater. We can't come soon, soon enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, so if, <coughs> If and when that happens, I mean, you're, it's going to happen again. So it may be such in the spring that you minimize the use of the surface water and utilize more of the brackish, um, and th that. But that gives you that option. It gives you a lot more options than you used to have. It's. Uh, I've heard people say that oh, it's too expensive to run a, a desal plant. How, how expensive is it compared to the conventional plant that we have now? Well, in this particular case, we're we're saving money by. You're saving money by. Uh, 
by doing it as opposed to not doing it. And uh, the other question is a discharge uh, that that's going to be pretty salty water, I suppose, right? Uh, well, if we're taking, um, it, we anticipate about, um, I want to say, 2,000 milligrams per liter, which is relative, whereas 1,000 is drinking water. So we don't need to drink, we need, don't need to treat the entire amount, we blend it back together. Uh, so the concentrate, which we call the concentrate, is the, is the byproduct of the, it's still a brackish water. Discharging it into, we, we work with TCQ on all these to see what, where we could actually discharge this. And I'd say that in just about every case, we've enhanced the quality of the water because it's a continuous flow. Uh, it's not a wastewater flow. It's, it's, uh, it's just higher mineral, a high, little higher mineral content and it flows down, downstream. And so generally all, all, the, all the streams and the, and the creeks that, and ditches that we've been able to, to permit have, have improved. And the, uh the diesel plants in the Donna area in that water district over there, um, have you had problems with the discharge in any of their creeks or resacas, I believe they call them? No, um, in, in that particular location, it's a little further, it's, it's probably similar, it's further from the Gulf of, of Mexico and um, on each side of the ditch you have orange groves and that are flourishing and then inside the ditch you've got uh, fish swimming and you've got um, um, less cattails I think it was. Well it's not, the cat it's not cattails aren't that great but you've yeah, got, they've got other, other, other greenery and, and uh, habitat that is, is beneficial. I think the, they they've mentioned that they had a problem with cattails and this minimizes the area. Because cattails like f really fresh water mm -hmm. and uh, and so they, they also like the nitrogen and the phosphorus that, that maybe a, a wastewater discharge uh, puts into there. And so we don't have that, and, which is a good thing because that takes up a lot of the oxygen in, in, in the water. And back to the water quality, I don't mean to beat a, beat a dead horse, but I know that everyone out there wants to know when will this end. Um, know, knowing now that they know that, that the city has engaged you to help and, and, and efforts are being made to alleviate this very natural occurring uh, phenomenon, what can they expect? I, I think, you know, it, it will pass. I mean, just because it, the, everything will turn over, but it's, it's probably an evolution of probably uh, two to four weeks. Um, it, it's not something that you just put, put a special chemical in. It, it, it's got to work through the system. And, and there may be some times where the city may have to flush some fire hydrants to flush the system out. Sure. And, and that's a waste of water, and we hate, we hate to do that, but that's, that's just something. And I, I we think I've do. seen them doing that mm -hmm. already right now, flushing out the several hydrants. Because I, th I think the water has improved a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's, a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was very noticeable. Mm -hmm. Now um, there are traces, but um, the council is incredibly interested in, in being able to have the information to, to tell the people that um, um, out there. Yeah, I'm hoping we get the data we need uh, by next week so that we can we can run through and, and give um, give the operators uh, uh, certain steps to take. Okay. And, and there's certain things at the water plant that need to be taken care of that aren't necessarily operational. There, uh, we've noticed a couple of things that maybe there may some minor capital improvements that would would assist in that in that endeavor as well. So we'll make we'll we'll have a list of priorities that need to be taken care of and. And you'll have some time to do that because at least till next fall. Because mm -hmm. earlier I mentioned that KB, I believe KBUE out of Austin had this story about Austin and having the exact same problem. So if Austin's having this problem, mostly everyone in Texas who derives their water from, from a think, lake is probably. I, I think everybody that takes surface water has the problem. It may not happen every year or every twice a year, but it, but it does happen. Does that have to do with the, with the level of the water or, or just the seasons? It has to do with the season. I mean, just season your, your, your whole body of water is subject to uh, sunlight mm. and, um, and then the bottom of, of, of your reservoir has sediment. And so, you know, it, if it turns over and you, you, have, you mix up all those, those factors, then you're going to have some algae blooms. Wow. Kind of like spring brings spring brings flowers. It also brings algae. 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 So <laughs> <laughs> I hate to put it in that simple context, but it pretty much is. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a growing living object that that's going to turn green, just like the leaves and just like the grass and everything else. 
That's right. So it'll happen again. And I guess the, the bottom line is if this um, brackish water project goes through, we won't have this problem anymore, we, right? We shouldn't have this problem. No. No, it will solve a lot of problems and save money at the same time. It's hard for algae to bloom um, 2,000 feet deep without sunlight. Mm -hmm. There you go. How, how much uh, would you have to be lowering the level of those pumps throughout the years because we're using so much water from that uh, aquifer? Uh, no, I, I, my groundwater hydrologist said that um, in this county, if you if you just use the, the amount of water that's in the Jasper, just in the county area, uh, is as much water as if all the lakes in Texas were full. Wow. That's a lot so of water. So if Alice puts, I say, I'll call two straws <laughs> in this, I don't think you could even measure any draw, any of the drawdown of the total volume of the aquifer. It's such a, such a small percentage of the total. Wow. Sounds like a win-win. But Sounds like a win-win. It does. I mean, it's, it's, I haven't seen anything that looks like you can give you a project and you can do it and it doesn't cost you any additional money. Because the money's still going to have to be spent, whether it's on that or fixing um, the transmission lines. Mm -hmm. But that, right. that alone only fixes part of the problems and it's not as beneficial as, as, as the desal. It doesn't solve your problem. It doesn't solve your drought problem. It doesn't solve your uh, your Taste. Taste problem. It doesn't really solve anything other than give you redundancy of a source of water that's very right, especially right now, subject to to drought conditions. And right at thirty percent level in the reservoir uh, is quite a concern. Usually, when when there's the good ideas like this, they they trend, uh, whether it be just people individually or communities and municipalities. Is this a trend in terms of water source? Oh, it, it is absolutely. I know that um, in the Rio Grande Valley, there's quite a bit of water derived from groundwater. Mm -hmm. And um, Brownsville probably treats more water. Uh, they just expanded their plant. After building one 10 years ago, they just expanded it because it was better and less costly for them to expand it sure. than to expand their two surface water treatment plants. Are, are there, or what, what major cities in Texas um, do this, do you know? Uh, besides Brownsville, it treats more water than any other entity. It may not be the largest plant, but it runs 24-7 at full capacity. El Paso uh, is the largest uh, inland, I think, in the world. And they have the capacity of treating 27 million gallons a day. Um, they treat about an average of five. Um, comparing that to the city of Alice, we're looking at about three million gallons a day. A good si a nice size, nice size plant. Um, consider they're in the middle of the fishing. consider they're they're in the middle of the desert, and yet they still have a almost infinite source of water. That's right. And I um, how uh, long ago did this in the valley have they done this? Or have the, done uh, the, the first the first plant in the valley was uh, 1999 for Rancho Viejo. It's a municipal utility district uh, just outside of Brownsville. Uh, we did a small plant in Laredo, outside Laredo, at the Columbia Bridge, where um, there was no water. They drilled a well, found out it was brackish, and they said, could you build a, a brackish plant, or a seawater, uh, a desalination plant for us? So they drilled the well, then, then did that. Um, and so they didn't even have a discharge. They just come pick up, because they really needed water, and so there was no discharge of that plant other than into a, a well, and they hauled off the, the, the concentrate. Uh, so we've come a long way since about, I guess that was 90, 1997. And in, um, in Harlingen, uh, they took wastewater and treated it through reverse osmosis and made bottle quality water for Fruit Loom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think we mentioned the Wichita Falls. That's the method that they use for their water, except they're mm -hmm. using the effluent water, uh, which is the only source of water that they have. Right. And we did look at that for City of Alice. I mean, we looked at er everything uh, from doing nothing to taking care of the uh, uh, improvements to your surface water system, maintaining one source. We looked at tying on to South Texas Water uh, um, Authority, where we built a pipeline to them in two different Which locations. Which is in Aguadulce? Well, they, yeah, we had a pipeline to Aguadulce and then one over to all the way to, if we took 
uh, in the entire mount, we, we went all the way to US 77. And those were the most expensive options because you pay for the treated water plus you pay for the improvements to the system. Um, and we also looked at taking wastewater, just like Wichita Falls, but you only generate less than a million gallons a day of wastewater. Uh, while it was even cheaper than, than taking surface water, you don't have to do that yet. Uh, I, I, while I believe it's a good idea, um, perception-wise, uh, you know, unless the city of Alice is out of water for two years, then it makes people realize that wastewater is still a good source of water. But I, I recommend that for any future economic development. And, and we're using the, which is the east, east side sewer plant wastewater for the irrigation at the golf course already. It, they have been for, we have been for years. And that's, that's really the best use of that, that water? Because you'd have to, if you took that from there, you'd have to find another source of water to irrigate the golf course, or not irrigate it. Or not irrigate it yeah. Then you'd have pretty much a dry golf course. And yeah. Even though the water coming, effluent water, um, it's a fancy term that just means uh, recycled water that's been treated, wastewater mm -hmm. that's been treated, correct? And yeah. actually, when it comes out of the plant, it comes out cleaner and purer than when it went in to be treated at the lake initially, correct? Right. I would say that uh, wastewater effluent is uh, probably cleaner than what you're taking water out of Lake Corpus Christi. I mean, it's it's a clean. I mean, this, the process of which we treat wastewater, we just enhance Mother Nature longer. And but just so there'd be no confusion, at least with this project, in terms of the brackish water, we're not talking about recycled water. We're not talking about no. that kind of water at all. The only recycled water I would, is what you're already doing at the golf course. And if you have an economic develop, if you have an industry that needs non-drinking water, sure. you could treat it to whatever quality. Uh, they could use it for okay. not for, but this is not uh, no no not no drinking of, of of F1. Okay, ours is would be coming from totally uh, these wells. Yeah, diesel, mm -hmm. okay. diesel plant. So as far as as the main concern, the the water taste and water quality that's that's being addressed by this by the city council and by the city government. Yes. Um, is there anything else that you could recommend that's not already being done or that you could assist? Oh, I, I I you know I have to hand it to. Councilman here that um, he actually came to um, one of the Texas Desal Association meetings um, almost a year and a half ago, and he said, "Well, he, th he thinks the city of Alice should look at this as as a, as a potential," and um, and so maybe several months had passed, and then uh, I think that the city was looking at spending eight million dollars on a on a rehab of a, a pipeline, and uh, so we. 18 million. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, so the, I, he asked me if I could look at and see if it was 18 million here or 15 or 17 million building this. And it came out that, um, well, you're paying so much for water and you're losing water through evaporation. Yeah, 50%, right? Just, yeah, 50% through so evaporation. The water that, that you, we buy from the from Mathis, it comes through the pipes and ends up in the, in the lake because essentially the lake is just a, when they call it a reservoir it's just a holding pond it's, right? a, it's a storage storage pond for um, gives you if something happened to your pipeline you have seven days of storage mm -hmm. uh, to treat the water so if you didn't have that connection and you you, you couldn't fix your connection you, you you're basically limited the amount of water that you have in the, in the storage. So, so on a small scale we bought let's say for example we buy ten dollars worth of water at the source, but that by the time we use it, there's only five dollars worth left. That's right. Right. So that's a. That's how much we're losing. That's how much you're losing. So that would be an additional savings to the savings that, that yeah. you mentioned before, and then the possible uh, revenue sources to sell into other communities, and um, the council's been pretty receptive to this. They have. They've been um, very. Um, yeah, and they they came to one of the la one of the last meetings uh, of the Desal Association, and and um, very very active in uh, participating and trying to understand so that, uh, and I recommend that if the plants in South Texas to go visit. So don't don't just blanketly go do this. And, and uh, I know that uh, Councilman has, has been down there with uh, one of the AWA members and, and, and staff has looked at the facilities and talked to the operators so that, you know, I'm not selling it's just a matter of um, is it good for the city of Alice? So uh, when we visited down there it was very attractive and uh, immediately you say well shoot we can do that here in the city of Alice too uh, why don't we do that so that's when we started looking at it uh, more depthly.
And or let's see, see if it was an alternative. Yeah. And, it, and, and it was. I mean, very, plants very impressive, the one in Donna, and then we visited also in the one in Brownsville, who they were adding to, they added, the, what, another five wells to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, very impressive management system with uh, the engineer and uh, Mrs. Govea that's been there for 10 years or so, and uh, outstanding facility that they have, and growing. Uh, and they put it, I believe the story she told us was they put it on in line as they were going through a, a drought. Uh, the Rio Grande River was going dry, mm -hmm. but they still had, they had that water uh, ready to go, uh, which was amazing you know, for them over there. And I mean, my thinking is if they can do it and if it's been doing, the people have been doing this for years, it, it's time that we you know, step up to the plate and maybe do similar uh, things here, which is a desal package. And we're, I think, a step closer. Mm -hmm. a lot. Well, which there's 200 plants, over 200 plants in Florida. Wow, over 200 plants mm -hmm. in Florida. Wow. Well, this city council and also the Water Authority commissioned you to do a study, correct? That is correct. And, and uh, a lot of what you said today, most of what you said today, is based on your findings and your uh, that study. It, it is. Um, I was actually. Um, surprised at the at the outcome as I, I know brackish is feasible but when I got to the bottom line that you could actually save money over doing nothing wow. as opposed to, you know if you do nothing it's going to cost you more than doing something and also factor in the the maintenance and the repairs mm -hmm. that will happen because these are very old transmission lines at least 20 some odd years correct yes so they're actually 50. 50 wow. and 30. Mm -hmm. The 30 inch line is 30 years old. Yeah, it was built in 1965. So the, the average citizen out there who turns on the faucet uh, can leave after listening to this and, and know that there's a fix to this, that not only will we not have, uh, will be drought proof, but this algae bloom that's very naturally occurring that happens all the time, not just to us, but to other cities, um, won't happen anymore with this project, correct? Mm -hmm. You could uh, stop using that water if you know it's there's an, an occurrence. You could sure. close the valve or not pump. Right. And just stay on the brackage water, on the reverse osmosis. Gives you a lot. Gives you options. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that that, that uh, I guess the average consumer of water in the city would would ask, well, if the city's saving all this money yearly and we're going to make money by doing this and save money by doing this, then Probably, I guess this is a question to the councilman. Uh, it would probably equate to uh, rate reductions because sure. now you're saving money, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think one of the when I, when I looked at four existing rates from Corpus Christi, you were pretty close mm -hmm. to even. I mean, maybe you know, a couple hundred thousand. Uh, what it what it does save you is if Corpus does go up in their rates, then you don't have to have a rate increase. Right. Yeah, so I, you know, I wouldn't go to so far that you would have a reduction, but it's possible. But I think it's more it, what is really more of a selling point if next year or the year after they raise the cost of water, sure. which is anticipated, then that you know it, it ca could be. I think I figured uh, could be an extra five hundred thousand dollars a year that you would pay for water. It, it is not that. Um, unbelievable to assume that all oh, the water won't go up because it's a basic a supply and demand issue yeah uh, less water more demand higher price well in payroll costs go up sure uh, chemical costs is probably the largest uh, constituent in power chemicals and power for both types of uh, facilities sure. so your surface water plant uses more chemicals sure. than wood in a brackish plant, sure. and those go up more than a percent or two per year. So, it, this this will go a long way in fighting I increases. Actually, actually promote decreases now. Yeah, right. Because yeah. that, 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 that would be the, the goal. This plant will use minimal chemicals or almost none. No, it uses chemicals, it uses it, it, but it uses less chemicals in the surface water plant. Okay. It's like most companies say, or like the McDonald's or whoever, say, well, our savings will be passed down to our customers, and this, this would be no different. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Any questions? Uh, no. Uh, I want to thank the City of Atlas, the public, for putting up with us again, and uh, thank you, Mr. Torres, for helping us do this little 
interview here and Mr. Norris. Uh, I know he's got to travel back to Austin yeah. and uh, have enjoyed uh, working with him and visiting with him. And um, I keep bugging him and see how we, we get results or not on this uh, uh, algae bloom that we're getting. And I think we're closer, uh, a lot closer than we were a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, uh, forgive the informality, it's just uh, we're here in the conversation and hopefully the, the people watching on TV are included in this conversation and when they flip the channel and listen to this they, they understand well this is what's happened and it's happened all over Texas, it's naturally occurring but there are possibilities in the future for, for better, improved, like you said, bottled quality water coming from the tap if, if, if this is an option that the council is leaning to and, and it's just a one-win. Well, it, it takes a progressive um, council and board members to uh, to lead to lead the city like this, and so I, I've been places where uh, either they don't believe it or you know. But the people that d have done it, uh, Brownsville, you can talk to um, all the entities down there that uh, they really believe in this process, and they have both processes as well. And uh, but it takes the leadership to move it to the next step. Well, I certainly want to thank you for your expertise, and I, I think it's helped tremendously for anyone who has questions as to their water quality, uh, how it's happening, why it's happening, uh, what this city is doing to alleviate the problem, as well as the multitude of other cities in, uh, in Texas, and uh, know that it's it'll end soon, and hopefully if this project goes through, which I think the council is leading to, that it'll probably never happen again. So. Right. Thanks for your help. I, I you bet. Hope. And uh, hopefully we'll Appreciate see you soon again. Appreciate the opportunity. Yes, it's, it's, thank you, it's, thank you so much. I'm pretty passionate about it. Okay, and again, if anybody has any questions, a uh, number of City Hall, just call City Hall. We'll be happy to answer any questions um, in terms of the water and obviously anything else. So thank you very much. Thank you.